It's Jeff Morrow here, Sandwich King, co-host of The Kitchen, about to make for you one of my favorite recipes on the planet, Sunday gravy. So you guys are gonna make it along with me today, just like my mama made it growing up. So let's start with getting our heat on. You need a big, heavy pot for this. So you guys are gonna start with your onion, garlic, and parsley. Here you got some fresh parsley. Just pick it nice all those individual leaves out of there. And you're gonna take your parsley and gently roll it in your fingers to make a tight little ball without being too aggressive and bruising it. And then you're gonna gently rock it back and forth like this. A lot of people, right, when they get after herbs, you start chopping it like this, right? That just bruises the herbs. Again, it's tender. We just took the time to pick the herbs off it. So gently, this is why a knife is shaped like this, right? It's got this kind of roll to it so you can move your knife in kind of in this rocking motion, get the most bang for your buck, right? Without having to sit there and destroy what you're chopping. You gotta have that fresh parsley in the meatball. And a meatball is inherently a very rustic, lovely dish, right? So you don't, there's nothing too refined about a meatball. We'll do that again with these herbs. Right, rocking slowly, close cuts. So we're moving our knife, right? And we're just kind of bunching it up, scraping it a little bit and rocking back and forth. Never this. You don't want to do this, you want to rock. You want to smooth, like a canoe in the ocean, like a kayak in the river, smooth. All right. All right, let's go to the onion now. So this we want to dice it because it's going into our sauce to help build layers of flavor in our Sunday gravy. There's two ends to an onion, right? You got this kind of stem end and this root end, the hairy end. So we're gonna lop off this end and keep this hairy root end on. So that's the first thing, right? You're gonna slide your knife right through it. All right? All right. It's a robust onion. Next, you gotta peel the onion. Right? Right to the edge there. Peel it back. Put our palm on there. So we're gonna press down a little bit, slide that knife with these horizontal cuts right through there. Things move around a little bit, but if your knife is sharp, boom, about four cuts. Then we do the same thing, like an assembly line, with this onion, right? Boom. And that hairy root end is keeping everything intact. Now we can turn and cut vertical slices into the onion, thus creating kind of a crosshatch in there, which makes it easy to dice. Now we can turn. I'm going to do this one too. Again, assembly line method. Vertical cuts. Keeping that hairy end on. Now we can start dicing. So using your two fingers, right, and your knuckles always is the guide, and keeping that thumb behind your pointer finger always, never in front, the best guide nature provided us here. So squeezing it together, using those knuckles as a guide, slicing that onion, beautiful. And when you get to the end, you could just toss it, right, and we'll do the same thing with this guy, right? Again, keeping that together, making those vertical cuts again to perfectly dice this onion. And there you go, there's that, that's what we're left with, that little bit of hairy end, that's all you got left. Bring that to the edge and swipe it right in there. Just so much safer too than carrying all the onion with your knife across the kitchen. Just have it ready to go. Use your hands. I'm not a big fan of swiping food up with a knife and bring it over to a pot, right? You know, it's just safer just to bring it to a bowl and then bring it into your pot. All right, beautiful. Clean as we go, let's move on to the garlic. We got these two little ends here. You kind of got that root end and that little pointy end. We're gonna lop this hard end off it right there. Next. I take the, the back of a knife gently, or you can use a bent scraper for this, and you're going to lightly smash it. And then what happens, you can see that it comes off. Try that again. 
Remember, we got, you're gonna take this little root end here, that hard end, take a small little sliver of that, open it up, right? Get rid of that, smash it a little bit, and again, watch. Nothing, look at that. Here we go, again. And again, we are going to mince this garlic, so you wanna get a good smash on there. It's but you don't want to over smash it. And again, this is a good time to get a, a bent scraper or even like a small pan or something and give it a smash if you're not comfortable using the knife. I think I believe in you and I believe you can use the knife. Just don't go overboard. Just give it a little tap. You don't want to over smash it. Then it's in a million pieces and then the chaff breaks up and it's harder to get out. But look at how clean that was. We want this, like the onions, to melt in that Sunday gravy. So you're going to want to really get a good mince on this and just start making real close cuts with that to start the mincing process. Lovely. All right, all there, and now we can do that move again, right? The, that smooth rocking motion as we collect it, you just wanna kinda take that garlic, bring it closer to you, and then start ripping through it again. You take your knife, you gently bring it close to, and then you start ripping through it, occasionally swiping, the garlic that sticks to there. You could put a little olive oil on here too to keep it from sticking to your knife even more. That works, salt as well. You got all your mise en place ready to go for your sauce. Now you're gonna move on to your meatballs. We got some good old fashioned white bread. We're gonna use this as our breadcrumb base. We're gonna make a panade, a classic combination of bread and a liquid, usually dairy product, just makes for a more tender meatball. We got a cup of milk right in there. You're gonna use your hands, you're gonna break this up, right, and get all those, all that dense bread kind of soaking in the milk. So we're using the panade here with the white bread in lieu of dried breadcrumbs, which I just think this gives a better texture to your meatballs. So next, Pecorino Romano. It's sharp, and it's that salty pop you need. Beautiful, next are eggs. So I got four eggs here because I'm gonna use one egg per pound of meat, and that's the perfect ratio to bind it together. One little hit like that, turn it and pop it. Try that again. Give it a little, little pop. Get your two thumbs right inside there and gently open and crack right in there. Try it again. Boom, little crack. Open it with your two thumbs right into that. We can add our parsley in next. All right, now we gotta season this. So we're using two teaspoons of salt because for each pound of meat, you need a half a teaspoon of salt. It's a great ratio. And a half a teaspoon of crushed black pepper. The number one rule you wanna follow when building your meatballs is not to overwork it. So let's mix this now. This way you'll get a better mix altogether. You're not mixing seven different things. If you mix six different things once, then when the meat goes in, you're not overworking the meat at all. Look at that. So next you're gonna grab your meat, and here we got what I think is the perfect ratio of ground meat applications, and that's two pounds of ground chuck, nice and fatty, right? Also the most affordable of the ground meats. Dump them in there. Here we go. We got our ground pork. One pound of ground pork, fresh ground pork, and one pound of ground veal. If you are going to put all that in there, it's good to get in there with your hands, become one with your meatballs, but also you will not overwork it. So that's why we're gonna kinda get in there gently and just start incorporating it all together with your fingers kinda out, right? We're still not smushing any to get anything together. You're just gonna get in there and smell it. Yes, your hands will smell for a couple days. You might wake yourself up at night when you go to scratch your nose, and you're like, oh my God, my fingers. Smell like a garlic bomb, but this is good for you. We are gonna use a three ounce ice cream scoop because it's a perfect size for a meatball, especially in Sunday gravy, because you want them to be, you want big meatballs in there, not tiny meatballs. And this just, it's even. Let's keep it even. So we'll take a little scoop. 
If you don't have an ice cream scooper, you can use a quarter cup measuring cup or big serving spoon. Whatever you got laying around that you can control it with. But look at that, perfect. Again, we're not sitting here, this ain't a cartoon, right? We're not gonna sit here and I'm rolling the meatball all afternoon. I'm making the meatballs, I'm sweating. No, you just wanna form it, man. Form it and set it down. Overworking is the enemy of your meatball and your meatloaf, any ground meat-based dish. You don't ever wanna, cause it will get meatloafy if you do overwork it. So you just want it, look at that. Perfect size. I mean, I know those are giant meatballs, but we're not doing anything small here today. We got sausage on deck. We got pork ribs. And when properly executed, your Sunday gravy will feed your family probably till next Sunday. That's how much. They're gonna want it, but also, we're putting all this into this, all this energy, you're putting all this time into all these steps, and it's gonna be worth it, that you're gonna wanna eat it day after day. Keep going with this, right? Not overworking it, using our hands. This does, this smell reminds me intensely of my kitchen, my mother making this growing up. I mean, I know it's like cliche, everybody's got a meatball, their mama, if you're an Italian kid, you've got 400 meatball stories, but what I love my mom doing more than anything, and what, besides the, the smell and what I'm smelling right now in the pecorino and the, and the parsley, is her actually dipping into the bowl before season, after seizing it for the first time, and taking up a little bit of that raw meat and tasting it. Something I could never do this day. Look at this. That's a dozen meatballs, guys. So we got a little oil in here. We're gonna sear off our sausages and start building layers of flavor in this Sunday gravy. This is good, nice, sweet Italian sausage. You can use the spicy Italian sausage. You could do a mix and match. This is just the sweet stuff. And we're gonna throw it right in there. Not to cook it, just to sear it. Get some color on that sausage as well as start rendering that fat out and building our first layer of flavor, which is salty, porky, sweet Italian sausage flavor, right? Leave it alone. You don't want to overcook this. We got this on pretty medium here, right? You don't want your oil to burn. You don't want anything to burn in this, right? We just want to kiss it with a little bit of that heat till it's GBD. Golden brown, delicious. That's usually the goal when searing. So we're gonna sear these on a couple sides. Depends what kind of mood I'm in, how many sides there are to a sausage, how thick they are. Again, I don't wanna over sear them, so I think, cause these are pretty small, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna hit them with two sides. We're not gonna go to all four sides of a sausage, right? We got that side. So you got you could potentially have nine sides to a sausage. You keep rolling around in the pan. But we're just going to do two because it's, it's a smaller size and we don't want to overcook it. Let's see. Beaut. Look at that. See? Nice. We kind of crisp up that natural casing skin. It's going to give it a little more texture when we bite into it later. But I can lay these guys right here. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Right? Nothing's... We got a little bit of that... You know, fond in the pan, we got some of the rendered fat. We wanna keep that in there right now. You want to now build your second layer of flavor, and that comes from the meatballs. You wanna sear these. Couple sides, get, get it nice and golden. Gentle, remember, these are very tender meatballs. So we got enough fat in there too to keep it from sticking. So we don't wanna add any additional fat. You already put the olive oil in here. You already have the rendering from the sausages. Move them around a little bit. They do want to, you, sh you, you want them ball shaped. And again, you do not want to ever overcrowd your pan when you're trying to get color on something. Just think of it that way. If you have too many things in a pan, it steams it and you will not get color on it. But if you have patience and do everything in stages, take your time with it, you'll have everything even and perfectly seared. Right, that's good. We can do the rest in the next batch. Now this is definitely a time you do not want to start prodding at your meatballs in here. You want to just let it form. If you move it too early, guess what's gonna happen? It's gonna stick. But if you wait and you move it at the right time, 
it'll naturally unstick from the bottom of the pan. Right, remember we got that pecorino in there, so that's gonna give it a nice crust, so we just wanna develop that flavor, right? Our second layer of flavor. Take a peek, I'm trying to see. That's what we're looking for. We don't wanna cook this in here again, right? We just wanna develop color on the outside of the meatball, creating more flavor on the meatball, and then you're thus extracting the flavor and the second layer of flavor for this. So let's take a gander at your meatballs here. That is what we want, all right? Both sides, maybe four sides, right? Getting that nice, beautiful golden brown. We're not cooking them in the middle. You are just taking them. It's still pretty medium rare in that center of here, and that's what you want in your meatball because it'll finish cooking in that sauce and be super juicy. So we could take these out, right? It's all about that fried exterior. It's a ton of flavor in there. Look at that. So you got your meatballs, you put them on the same tray, let them rest, and now we can go directly, still in the same fat in the pan, you're gonna put the remaining meatballs in there and get your second batch going. So you wanna sear your meatballs about five minutes aside till it's nice and deep golden brown. Again, that's what we're looking for. These are perfect, we can let these guys rest and move on to the super secret layer of flavor, a neck bone. You're like, what is a neck bone? It's a cheaper rib. It's got all the same great collagen and cartilage and fat and flavor in there. So let's take a look at our pan here. We got a nice amount of rendered fat in there. If there is too much fat at the bottom of your pan, you wanna gently pour it out. You can use it for later. We're gonna season our neck bones just lightly. Right, we got, you can just plop down that seasoned side. You can see, look at that beautiful marbling in there. Super tough cut, but worth the wait once you get it braised. Falls off the bone. All that meat kind of starts, starts entering the sauce. You might want to bump your heat up if you do have a slightly overcrowded pan. So you just want to give a little color on the outside. Little bit. Yeah. If you can't find neck bones, you can definitely use country style ribs or even like cut up spare ribs if you find them. But that bone is very important to building those layers of flavors. Let's check this guy. That's what we want. Just a little golden kiss of color. Flip them. Do the other side a couple more minutes. You want to turn down your heat right now. Because when you do take this out, you don't want what's remaining to burn. Look at that, that's all we're looking for. Just a little quick, about three minute aside sear on these neck bones. You can see your bottom of the pan here, there's not a lot of fat in there. I'm actually gonna add a little olive oil because next up are come the aromatics, the onions. So you wanna make sure this is on pretty medium low. We're putting in that onion. Season it now, just to kind of extrude some of that moisture from the onion. You should always have your deglazing liquid on standby. This is red wine. And deglazing is the act of kind of liquefying all the fond on the bottom of your pan. Lovely. Let's add the garlic, making sure we got our stuff on standby. Actually, before we do that, we gotta add our dry Italian spice mix here. This has got your rosemary, your oregano, your thyme, your basil, hitting all the points. I prefer to use this rather than just the traditional dried oregano. I think this is a lot more flavor. Maybe 30 seconds is a perfect amount of time to bloom. Now we can put our garlic, which we're controlling our heat. We're not burning this. This just needs a little bit of love until you smell it. When you smell the garlic and becomes fragrant, that's your next step. That's when you want to deglaze. Just smelled it, just like that. This is very small mince. It will cook in the sauce. Good old red wine. Now it smells so sweet, the alcohol smell is dissipating. Now we can add the rest of our ingredients, which you can get super fancy with this or you can buy whatever's on sale. I would urge you to spend an extra dollar a can on like good San Marzano crushed tomatoes. They're, they're canned at the peak of season. But get them in there, right? You wanna make sure we turn this down. We just wanna simmer from now on. We don't wanna boil anything from this point on. 
we really want to control our heat. All right, so you want to give it a stir. And something about making sauce is the, the messiest thing, so just be prepared for splatter. I would not wear a white tee, unless you're related to me or one of my uncles seem to always cook in white t-shirts that even right out of the wash, they had sauce stains on them. Nice, so we just wanna simmer here. What I like to do too, here we go. So I just filled it up with a little bit of water and we're going to kind of rinse these in a way, do it back and forth till you get all those clingy little tomatoes off the side of that can. Keep this on the side if you do need to add a little more liquid, but we'll add about yay much. And now, we put the meat back in there. So we're gonna put the neck bones on the bottom because we're not gonna have to touch them. They take the longest to cook. It's good to be the closest to the heat source. Uh, some of the other stuff we're gonna temp because I want them perfectly cooked. I don't want them overcooked. But these guys, they can, they can hot tub all night long. They don't mind. We will put our meatballs in there. Again, you don't wanna stir this too much, right? This is all a kind of tender stuff. This is not a big pot of chili. You don't want to treat it like a big pot of chili. You want to treat it like the gravy. So let things kind of hang out in there. Beautiful. I know you're saying, how will it fit? It will fit. I'll make it fit. Look at this, boom. So this does all fit perfectly, right? And again, we're going to let this simmer gently for about an hour. We're going to tempt the meatballs and, see, and bring them perfectly to 165, but let those... Take them out, and then you're gonna let those neck bones simmer even longer. All right, I'm gonna turn this down a little bit. Nice to nice low simmer, we're gonna lid it. Now remember, whenever you put a lid on something, think of it as literally turning this up two notches. You just give it a little crack so some steam does get out of there. All right, let this go for about an hour, and then we're gonna take out the meatballs and the sausage. So you cleared your workspace. We got a nice clean slate now. Let's check your Sunday gravy. Oh, let's take a temperature right now because who likes an overcooked anything? Perfect. All right, so we can take those out because they are perfectly cooked. Sausage, tender. The best part is because you didn't overwork your meatballs, it was a little looser. So some of that meat got in your Sunday gravy and do not disturb the neck bones. Just leave them at the bottom there. Put the cover back on. Give it a little room to breathe, and then you're gonna let this go for another three hours or until those neck bones are perfectly tender, fall off the bone. This can go in the fridge. So your neck bones have been simmering for about two and a half, three hours. Oh man, fall off the, look at that. Play it safe, take the bones out. So you're gonna pull your meatballs and your sausage out of the fridge, you kinda come to room temperature. And we're gonna add everything back in here. You wanna make sure you have water going, boiling, ready for your pasta. These meatballs, wanna put that sausage, get it all nestled in there, still simmering real low. You gotta bring these kind of, just heat them up. We're not cooking these any further. We're just heating them up in that, that gravy right there. Last meatball, right? What are we gonna do with this? Just throw it right in the sink? No, come on, dude. That's all that rested flavor. That kind of escaped out of that sausage, out of that meatball. So you're gonna not waste a drop of that. Put it right back into the pan. Lovely. Again, very gentle simmer. Now we salt the water. And we're gonna pour it in there. Super salty, right? And look at it, it's boiling. We're waiting on nothing. We got the, you got the double boiler in there. I always suggest using this. Give it a stir immediately. So nothing sticks together. And let it go. How do you know your pasta's done? You eat it. You like it like that? You're done. Pasta's cooking. You got it boiling perfectly. Salted water, let's get our garnish. Nothing better than just good old fashioned fresh basil. I like to chiffon on my basil. That's what we're gonna do right now because I like every bite to have almost an equal number of basil flavor in there. You layer your leaves. So just like we did with the parsley, we're gonna gently roll it, and then we're gonna make as close cuts as we humanly can to make that chiffonade or ribbon. It takes practice, but you're practicing right now, you're doing this. So you wanna make sure, again, your knuckle is a guide all the way up to that edge, 
That knife is sharp and your rocking motion, running it through, quick, super close cuts. So you get that ribbon effect. Let's check our pasta. Oh yeah, I can tell you right now. Shut off your heat. The beauty of these double boilers, you'll find out if you got one, is that you don't have to go to the sink with them. You can kind of let it drain. You can kind of let it hold on to all that pasta water. If your sauce is a little thick or it's the day after when it's like super thick, your Sunday gravy, you can add a little of that pasta water to kind of help thin it out a little bit. Check this. Oh yeah. So now I'm gonna take a big pasta bowl. Right, I'm just gonna put a little, this kind of on the bottom just to kind of help move things around. Now we can put the pasta. Oh, look at those big wide noodles. Oh, that's a great noodle for this, right? Spaghetti's traditional, ziti, mustacholi, rigatoni, anything but that's big and some, you know, like an interior, you know, that has a, sort of like a tube. Anything with tubes or ridges, it's gonna cling on to all that sauce. We start taking some of that sauce from the side. You can see those, that chunk, oh, just chunks of meat and neck bone. And then what I like to do is make sure there's a nice coating of sauce. Sauce everywhere. It wouldn't be a, it wouldn't be a Sunday in Sunday gravy without definitely a lot of splatter. It's like a Pollock painting around here. This is good though. Okay, beautiful, beautiful. Look at that, beautiful. Now, two things. Take, take the meatballs, put them on top with more of that sauce. We just wanna make sure all the noodles were coat so they don't stick together. We got sausage. We got neck bones. Oh, look at that. Look at that. If chicken soup cures the common cold, Sunday gravy will cure anything. Look at that. That's why we found those neck bones, man. I'm telling you, if you can find the neck bones, you get the neck bones. But look at all that. Save the rest in the sauce, right? Serve this right next to it. We got, of course, that beautiful basil right here. See that? I'm so Chicago, it's just no matter where I, I go, it just shows a, a, a bucket of jardinera for me. This is another thing I need you to look up, guys. You can order online. It's great, it's pickled peppers. I talk about it all the time on the kitchen. I love jardinera. It's a great little accompaniment of spice and pickliness to kind of cut through all that richness in there. This is what you're left with. Perfectly cooked pasta and all using, you know, not a ton of ingredients. Properly cooked meat, taken out at the right time, beautifully braised, and of course, a little bit of that pecorino right on top. There it is. Here we go. You get funk from the Romano, fennel from the sausage. Even that little bite of meatball, it just like fell apart on my tongue. All right, thank you guys for cooking along with me, making our family favorite Sunday gravy. I hope your family loves it just as much as the Morrow's. See ya.